So thank you all for, for everything that you're doing, and, and thank you all for, for your support in all of those ministries and loving others. And so this morning what we're going to look at is restoration and life for the new year. We're thinking about all the things that are coming up ahead, but in order to move ahead, you've got to look back a little bit. In order to move ahead and get on track with God, you've got to be able to look and ask yourself, what needs to be changed? And so there's so many of us uh, that don't like that word, like that's a taboo word or something, or that's something we don't like to think about because you and I can get pretty comfortable in our lives, can't we? We can get very comfortable in the things that we do, the actions we engage in, the hobbies and the pastimes and the, the things we spend our money on, the things we spend you know, the most time. All these things kind of go into the things we need to change. So if we're going to get back on track, if we're going to do what we ought to do, we've got to think about change. But who can change a person that doesn't want to change? How many of you understand what I'm saying? You can't change a person that doesn't want to change. I can't change a single person if they're not open to change. You understand what I'm saying? There's, there's got to be in your life a desire for something different, something more than things that you've already had in your life. When you look in the mirror, when you open the front door, when you encounter coworkers, when you go to school in 2020, what will your life say about you? See, I think we live in a society where change is inevitable. But I believe that you and I can choose to change and choose that before a time comes. What does that mean? It means that we feel that God is, when we feel that God is tugging at our hearts or leading in a direction, we can choose to follow Jesus. You and I cannot and are not afforded uh, the length of life to see beyond a certain point. You and I can't plan super ahead of things. But what we can do is that we can choose to follow God who promises that He'll be with us each step of the way. But what if you and I are that prodigal, that prodigal son or daughter of, of, of God who has gone so far off the map that you say, well, there's no possible way. There's no possible way of return. And it seems like, you know, maybe every decision that, that you have made has, has been in the wrong direction or the wrong path. Do you think there's hope for you too? I truly believe that there is hope, and that hope is in God. And we're thinking of the new year, we're thinking of all the things that are there. But we recall in this passage what the father did in the scriptures about the prodigal son. He ran to his son, welcomed him home. He gave him the best even though he had chosen a different path. To me, there's restoration in our lives and it's through Jesus in Christ Jesus Christ forgiveness and restoration it's never too late for us to call on him so restoration and life in the new year comes through Jesus Christ and so there are consequences for every action and everything that happens but the blood on the sin-stained cross and the open grave are both pathways to salvation and forgiveness see I truly believe that the hardest step in a new direction is that first one isn't it when you and I've got to choose to accept the change and, and follow where God wants us to go. That first step is difficult because we have to say there's some things within us that ought not be there. There are some decisions and choices that I've made that really I should not have made. There are some paths that I've, that I've taken and I went down that I wish I had not. And there are temptations and things that hit me right here and now that I wish I could get past. The first step in acknowledging that there is a need for change is what we see here because we must understand that once we begin we realize whose power we are standing in the first place with 
The power of God gives us the ability to be able to stand and make the changes we need to make in a year of lots of changes. Many of us grew up in various different age groups and years and times and periods in our lives. And many of us are proud or, we're, or we think we've got to have it all together. But I tell you, when we are willing to acknowledge before God those things in our lives which ought not be there, our struggles, our deepest pains and sorrows, then I think that's where we begin to understand the power of God and the ability of God to give us the strength to change the things that we can't change on our own. Deuteronomy 30. In Deuteronomy 30, God still promised restoration here. Now what happened here? In and, and verse 1 of chapter 30 it says, So it shall be written when all these things have come upon you, the blessing and the curse which I have set before you, and you called them to mind in all the nations where the Lord your God has banished you, and you return to the Lord your God and obey Him with all of your heart and soul according to all that I have commanded you today you and your sons, then the Lord your God will restore you from captivity, have compassion on you, and will gather you again from all the peoples where the Lord has scattered you. If your outcasts are at the ends of the earth, then, then from there the Lord your God will gather you. From there He will bring you back. The Lord your God will bring you into the land which your fathers possessed, and you shall possess it, and He will prosper you and multiply you more than your fathers. Moreover, the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your descendants to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, so that you may live. The Lord your God will inflict all of these curses on your enemies and on those who hate you, who persecuted you. And you shall again obey the Lord and observe all His commandments which I command you today. Then the Lord your God will prosper you abundantly in all the work of your hand, in the offspring of your body, and in the offspring of your cattle, and in all the produce of your ground for your for the Lord will again rejoice over you for good, just as He rejoiced over your fathers. If you, keep, if you obey the Lord your God to keep His commandments and His statutes, which are written in the book of the law, if you turn to the Lord your God with all of your heart and soul, for this I command you, which I command you today, is not too gif difficult for you, nor is it out of reach. It is not in heaven that you should say, who will go up to heaven for us to get, a, get it for us and make, it, make us hear it that we may observe it. Nor is it beyond the sea that you shall say, who will cross the sea for us to get it for us and make, it, make us hear it that we may observe it. But the word is very near to you in your mouth and in your heart that you may observe it. So... So there's a promise of restoration. There's a promise that God would restore His favor with these people. He would restore their land, their produce, all of these things that, that they had, had been taken away from them because of their decision to follow other gods, to be involved in other nations, and to do the things that they ought not do, to totally turn their back on the things which they ought to be doing in God. God said, if you will restore you will be restored if you will turn from those wicked ways and follow me if you will observe my commandments if you will put me in the right place in your life make the changes that only I can make in you then I will bring about these things in your life the only way you can change is if you return to the Lord and obey him with all of your heart and soul how many of us need to understand that kind of restoration? That you and I, on our own and in our own ability, we can't do anything to change. But it's when we give ourselves to God, when we say, God, wholeheartedly I want to follow you in 2020. Wholeheartedly I want to go through my heart and mind and my life and I want to take the things out of my heart and mind that don't need to be there. I want to give my struggles, my deepest hurts, my deepest desires, my deepest temptations, my, my hardest times in the past, the things which I carry with me today. All of these things, God, God I want you 
to take those things out of me, but I'm willing to let them go that you might restore me, that you might be God Almighty in my life, that, that, that all these things which I have, God, I want to turn them over to you. Because what does it say? That, that He will restore you to the land that you possessed, that He's given to you, and that He will prosper you and multiply you more than those that came before you. So what does it take for you and I? What does that scripture passage say there? It says, we've got to let God circumcise our hearts, right? We've got to let God do the work in us. If we understand one of the names for him is the great physician, then we understand that God can do what nobody else can. There's, there's a propensity to, to say, well, well, if I work hard and, and, and I do all the things myself and I put the time and effort into it, then certainly I can achieve what I want to achieve. But momentary, temporary achievements pale in comparison to the work of God. The intricate work of God that is in all of the details where God can do more than any one person could ever do in their greatest day. God can do more. God is far greater, far stronger, more knowledgeable, more courageous, more able than any bit of intelligence or things that we can learn how to do. Any bit of trying to do on our own. God is greater. So, so we understand that restoration comes through Him. And it takes you and I making a decision in our hearts and lives that we are not going to do anything that doesn't glorify God. That we're not going to allow anything to happen in our lives this 2020 year and if it does, we're going to go right to God. We're not going to try to uh, claim things on our own. So we're not going to try to make things on our own. We're not going to try to make self-improvement steps. We're going to go to God and we're going to say, God, you are the way that I remain strong in 2020. You are the way that I live and live abundantly. And so it takes within us a desire to change, yes, but it takes within us a desire to know more about God each and every day. That He might be able to do more in us. And see, we've got to understand that God wants us to prosper. Because if you and I are living according to the Word of God and God is doing His best in us then that stands to reason that God is going to do something extraordinary around us. Amen? I'm not saying that we're going to get ahead and we're going to have all this money, you know, kind of thing. I'm saying that if, if we have turned our hearts and minds to God, if we've said you are the most important thing, 100% in my life, I'm going to give to you, then God is able to do immeasurably more in our heart and lives to reach those around us for His name's sake. For, for God to use us to reach people in the furthermost parts of this world. For God to use us to reach our neighbors, our friends, those people in our family that we have begged, begged to come to church. But those people in our family that we've begged to come to church, they're waiting to see God in us where they are before they're ever willing to step in the door of a church. We have to live according to the Word of God, be willing to change the things in our lives which we think is, is impossible to change in order that we might say, look at what God did. See, you and I can't do anything, can we? It's God, right? It is. I can't preach. It's God in me. I can't share the good news with people as I need to. It's God in me that gives me the ability to do those things. It's God's Word that testifies to the truth and the promise that only He can bring. So I have to understand that, that yes, God's going to do something. Yes, God's going to do something in me if He wants to. But I have to be open and willing for God to do His best in me. And I feel like sometimes we give God a half-hearted effort. We say, well, God, I've carved out a little bit of time for you here and there. God wants it all. 
And if we want God to do our, His best in us, and we want our lives to mean the most, then we've got to stop doing half-hearted efforts. And we say, well, I want this abundant life in 2020 that God has always told me. I want this life that, that is just beyond all joy. I want my heart and mind to be all about God. Then what are we going to do right here and now to turn ourselves to Him to acknowledge those things in our life which ought not be there. To, to bring before God this, this reminder, this, this honesty, this, this bearing all at the altar of God to say, God, I can't overcome these things in my life, but God, I want to change. I want to do differently. I want to be restored. I want to know what it's like to be loved and cherished. I want to be used by you. I've got to turn my heart, God. Circumcise my heart, God. Take, take who I am and what I've been, God, and, and take that, God, that I might be in right standing with you, that I might have life and life abundant. So, God, what, you've, what I've done this year, God, I want you to take, and I want you to do your best to me in 2020. Restore me to your purpose for me in my life. So, We've got part of that is seeing what has been set before us. Deuteronomy 30.15 says this, as we see what's ahead of us. See that I've set before you today life and prosperity and death and adversity, and that I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in His ways, and to keep His commandments and statutes and His judgments, that you may live and multiply, and that the Lord your God may bless you in the land that you're entering to possess it. But if your heart turns away, and you will not obey, but are drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall surely perish. You will not prolong your days in the land which you are crossing, the Jordan to enter and possess it. I call heaven and earth to witness to you today that I have set before you life and death, the blessing and the curse, so, that, so choose life in order that you may live, you and your descendants. By loving God, by loving the Lord your God, by obeying His voice, and by holding fast to him for this is your life and the length of your days that you may live in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers to Abraham Isaac and Jacob to give them so so it's not necessarily just about how we live and how we follow it's others who come after us Y'all, we are, we are people of influence. That means that, that if I observe God's commandments, if I allow for Him to restore, renew, guide, and direct me, if I say life only comes through Him, and I begin to live my life in such a manner, then others are going to pattern their lives around it in the same way. They're going to want to know what changes happen in my life and how that change might appear in their lives. In other words, if I live like I ought to live, and I allow for God to have His greatest in me and I understand where my joy comes from where the direction of my life comes from and I change the things I ought to change and I leave the things behind that ought to be left behind then those that come after me my children my family those that are come around me my co-workers my friends those that are around me that I meet once in a lifetime as I'm serving in missions those around me begin to understand what's set before them as well so this, will we choose restoration in life during this new year? And see, some of us look at our shortcomings and we say, well, these are my shortcomings, these are my difficulties, these are my temptations, these are my desires, these are my things that, that, that I can't seem to get past. This is my past and it seems to have a hold on me. These are all the things that are, that, that are behind me, but, but in reality, this is the truth and this is kind of how I look at it. You know, I, I almost say that, that we need to stare this new year in the face and tell it how big our God is. See, our God is capable, isn't He? He is able. I've seen God take the most, 
uh, difficult person, the most hard-hearted person, the most sin-filled person, the person who is, has no hope or no life, and I've seen God do something in their life that is remarkable and unexplainable by anything else in this world. And I guarantee you, you and I will travel a thousand times over and we will not find one thing that compares to our God and what He offers. See, in this world, there are temporary fixes, right? But you can't temporarily fix an eternal problem, can you? You and I must understand that, that it is through God that life comes. Through Jesus Christ who died for us, that's where life comes. Come. So when we face a problem, we need to tell them how big our God is, right? When we face a setback, we tell it how big our God is. When we face temptation, when we face all of these things, we tell them and tell it how big our God is and we call on Jesus. We call on Him because we know that He is there. He is our ever-present help in time of need, right? He never, ever leaves us nor forsakes us. So this morning, in thinking of what the people were being restored to and from, we must understand for all that have gathered here this morning who have yet to call on Jesus for redemption and yet to taste of His salvation, we must understand some truths about what Scripture says. And so, in the book of Romans, it says this. In Romans 3.23, it says this, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That means that each and every one of us have sinned and have need of God, don't we? Every single one of us. You might say, well, I don't believe like you do. Every one of us sin and fall short of the glory of God. Every one of us have a, a, a way of life that we have chosen and it is not God's way. So we think about all of us sin and fall short of the glory of God. So we all need God. Romans 6, 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. See, you and I deserve what comes to us. The, the consequences for our decisions, the, the, the sin-stained death that Jesus took, we deserve that. He didn't deserve that. But what did Jesus do? As He died for us, He chose to take our sin, to provide a relationship, a way with God that wasn't there, a path that wasn't there, and He chose to do that because of His great love for us. So that means that we are due death for our debt. But He gave us life through the cross, and that is eternal. Eternal means what? Without end then that means that we who know Him have that forgiveness forevermore. Romans 5, 8 says, But God demonstrated His love for us, that while we were still sinners, He died for us. In the midst of everything that you say, well, in 2019 and years past, and even so farther back than that, there are a lot of regrets. God, a lot of things that, that tempt me, a lot of things that ensnare me, a lot of things that I need to let go, a lot of things that I need to change, a lot of things that need to, need to be done differently. So, so what is keeping us from doing that if we understand that He is the way that we are able to overcome those things that even when we were still doing those things which we wish we could change he still died for us Romans 10 9 through 10 and 13 says that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead then you will be saved for with the heart a person believes resulting in righteousness and with the mouth he confesses resulting in salvation and then verse 13 says this, For whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. You know, there's nothing more true than the words read there. That if you are here this morning and you are looking for a new year, it's not in the resolutions or goals you set. It's in the God you follow. Most people will say that the resolutions are goals. If they're kept for three months, then they'll stick throughout the year next year. 
but I want you to understand that it matters today how you choose to live and it influences the rest of your life. Not just 365 days of next year. Not just all the time that's ahead, but forever. Eternal. If you're willing to change and turn from your wicked ways and follow Him, then He will bring restoration like you've never seen in your life. Maybe you live at home and it's a, it's a place of turmoil and difficulty and hardship and sorrow and pain and maybe that's your home life and that's what you experience every day and maybe it's simply because you have not rendered your heart to God yet because I've seen God change the, the whole culture the whole atmosphere the whole environment of a home and draw the entirety of it to him I've seen God do something extraordinary in the lives of those who are incarcerated and locked up and they will have no chance of getting out of there but they know who holds their heart. I've seen people that are so engrossed in temptations and desires and addictions and things like that, that that they said, you know what, I can't possibly make it out of this. I can't possibly find my way out of this. But when they found Jesus, they found their way. I've seen people that God has remarkably changed direction in their life, so much so that others who knew them were blown away because of what God had done. And I tell you this, the same God who can change will change if we render our hearts to Him. So this morning I'm going to ask you, do you know Jesus Christ? Do you know without a shadow of a doubt that if you died here and today, that you would be in heaven for eternal life? Eternity. Not a temporary fix, but an eternal fix in Jesus Christ. It's not about when we get our life in order. It's about what Jesus Christ did for us as He died for us once and for all. So will you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead? Will you be saved today? Start this new year in a manner unlike others. Maybe you're a dad and you say, well, I'm too proud to admit the things that I need to change. Well, what's going to happen if you're a dad and you do that? What's going to happen in your marriage? What's going to happen with the kids that are watching you if you're unwilling to admit the things that you need to admit before God Almighty? But what if God changed your life and changed your marriage and changed your relationships and changed your kids and changed your family and changed your friends and changed everybody around because of your willingness to follow Him like you ought to in 2020? What if God did something so extraordinary in your life that it changed the world around you? See, God wants us to live for Him abundantly. And when God is able to use us to His greatest in us, then what happens? Others around us come to know Jesus Christ. And I tell you, we live in a world right now where we need the Word of God to be sown into the hearts of our friends around us. Y'all, there's so many people that need hope in this world right now. And the greatest hope lies within Jesus Christ. Will you today trust in Jesus before it's too late. Maybe you're thinking 2020, I've got so many things. I'm already a Christian. I've got so many things in my life and I've got so many things going on, but there's so many things that you need to come before God and confess and say, God, I don't just want to have a a, a 2020 year that's kind of vanilla where I just kind of sneak by or I just kind of do the bare minimum, but I want to live an abundant life where you can do immeasurably more in my life. Maybe there's some things in your heart and your life you need to get right by God. I'm going to invite you to come to the altar this morning. Just come before Him and be honest before God. And watch what happens.